uh, could you shortly introduce yourself? Sure. Um, I'm Nicole Kelly. I am the CEO of Full Frontal ROI Consulting. And basically, um, I'm also a blogger. I blog for Social Media Examiner and Social Media Explorer. We also have a blog at fullfrontalroi.com. What's your view on content marketing? I think it's critical. I think that um, social media can't be successful without amazingly awesome content. How do you make that step from having the, strate the, the strategy to making it measurable? So the first thing is, is that we need to make it super easy for people to buy. So when we optimize that path to conversion, then it's much easier to determine whether or not what we're doing is working. If you looked at a sales funnel, essentially, social media is basically adding three levels to that sales funnel. So okay. at the very top level, it's the exposure category. And the next level in the funnel is what we call influence. And influence is important because what we found through research is that when an influencer in your industry mentions your brand or refers people to your brand, mm -hmm. it tends to convert more like, I refer them directly to you. Then the last category before we get into that conversion um, metric is the engagement category. And in social media, engagement is really important. So we also measure a cost per engagement. And the cost per engagement in social tends to play very well, obviously, because there's so many forms of engagement possible. The reality is, is that when you start to measure ROI the first time in social media, mm -hmm. it's probably going to be negative because we've never measured it before. Uh -huh. So we haven't been optimizing to increase the return. What are your tips in setting up ROI targets? So the first is that you need to truly measure your baselines. So the first question you have to ask is, do you know when the social media channel is delivering a lead to the company? Do you know when a social media customer actually came from social media? Do you have an idea of, of how to uh, handle those uh, leads? Is there a difference? Is there a difference between handling a traditional lead and a lead gained through content marketing? Um, I think that there is, and, and my tests have shown that, um, that there is a difference. And the one thing that I'll say is one of the big challenges with social media is that you don't own the audience. If Facebook blew up tomorrow, all of the work that you had done to gain this following is gone, yep. and you have no way to contact them. What I prefer to do is do a, you know, basically a strategy of what we call layered content. Layered content is essentially, we look at it at three different ways. Can we create some kind of a summary article about this piece uh, or this content type? You know, if we have a topic, you know, is there five tips that we could give on this specific content piece? Then the second yeah. is we need a follow-up to that. So if they like these five tips, we need to have something that we can offer to them on the back end that has more in-depth information. Yeah. Now we can identify where leads are in the sales funnel. Mm -hmm. Because if they just looked at the ebook and they didn't go through the next step, we know that we need to then figure out how to get them to take the next step. I mean, we all would like to send uh, uh, the one tweet and have uh, the huge viral success. But Let's begin at the, at the base. What are your tips to get an audience to engage? So I, I have a couple. The first is that you have to test content. What are, what are the most common mistakes made by businesses in, 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 in your experience in maintaining a profitable content marketing strategy? So think of it in terms of would someone pay to receive my marketing content or not? And that's a really different question, right? Yeah makes yeah. you really think about it differently uh -huh. because now it's not about getting my message out now it's about I really have to do a great job of delivering value would you have advised companies to outsource their content creation you know like I said I think that a lot of companies are finding that it's more cost effective for them to outsource mm -hmm. the majority of their content development than it is to try and replace that knowledge internally and have dedicated resources so um, well basically these are my questions uh, thank you so much I appreciate it thank you have a good day all right you too